Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Dr. Blum, how do you incorporate arubulin mesylate in treating metastatic breast cancer, and is it considered standard of care in third line setting in your clinic? Yes, arubulin is considered third, uh, approved therapy in the third line setting. I was privileged to be part of the clinical trial which led to the FDA approval of arubulin. The trial design was really very interesting and really has changed the landscape for clinical trials because this was a comparator of arubulin versus uh, the agent of physician's choice, which was really quite interesting. And what the trial showed was that patients uh, who received arubulin had improved overall survival compared to these agents of the physician's choice. The uh, arubulin is very um, active in metastatic breast cancer and in general is well tolerated. Um, the main side effects of arubulin are uh, cytopenias, can cause some alopecia, and it can cause some neuropathy. It was interesting that patients were allowed into the clinical trial who had grade one or grade two peripheral neuropathy. I thought that was quite unusual that patients were allowed into the trial even with grade two peripheral neuropathy. Um, the other interesting thing about aribulin is that it's, it's quite active in the triple negative breast cancer setting as well. We look forward to other trials in the future looking at aribulin with other agents, and I understand that it's being paired with capecitabine uh, to look at activity. Um, that makes perfect sense to me given our, my own experience in clinical trials with paclitaxel and, um, and uh, capecitabine which is a very active combination. So it may turn out that aribulin and capecitabine, which don't have competing side effects, um, may work well together as, as therapy. But currently, um, aribulin is, is approved for patients who've progressed despite an anthracycline and a taxane, with one exception. Those patients who are not eligible to receive an anthracycline can still receive aribulin. So for a patient who has a decreased ejection fraction, for example, that patient could then get aribulin. So, but back to, back to triple negative. So, the issue with triple negative really is when they relapse. And so, assume the patient truly is triple negative. We've gone through all that rigmarole and they're truly triple negative. Um, I think that it really depends on where the disease is. I think the vast majority of triple negatives do relapse uh, in the visceral organs, be it lung or liver. Um, I think in that, and soft tissue, a lot of them. Bone is there too, but not as much as the other two. I think that cytotoxic chemotherapy is clearly the standard of care. It depends on when they relapse. If someone relapses greater than say 12 months, 15 months, 18 months after their adjuvant therapy, uh, I likely will retreat them with a taxane-based therapy first, probably maybe gemcitabine second or something like that. I think that if, however, they've relapsed early, um, say within 12 months, I usually will start with arubulin. I've had a lot of success with arubulin, um, uh, both in early relapsers as well as second-line therapy, say someone who has progressed uh, on uh, a taxane as uh, frontline therapy for their triple negative breast cancer, I tend to go to arubulin a lot in that setting. I think I've had a lot of activity with my patients.